Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swagglehaas. And in this video, we're taking a look at GoCollect's trending comments for the week of April 17th. Now, for those who don't know, GoCollect puts out a bi-weekly article that switches between hottest comics and trending comics. And this week is trending comics, which is a little more curated list written by Matt Tuck. But before I get into the books, if you guys could drop me a like or a comment or subscribe if you're enjoying the content, help support the channel, doing those things, I would appreciate it. But you know how we got to do. It's Monday. Let's get right into it here. And talking about the number five book, we got Champions number one, new to the list, sitting in the number 100 spot. So just squeaking in there. And what is the significance of this? Well, this would be the first appearance of the new iteration of the Champions team written by Mark Wade, a book that came out in 2016. And this has been one of those interesting kind of spec books, you know, looking at the future landscape of the MCU and where we're going from here. Of course, the Champions team originally came out in 1975. It was the one that would feature characters like Hercules and Black Widow and Iceman and Archangel, basically all the X-Men uh, that had got kicked off the X-Men team when they were replaced with giant sized X-Men. And then the Champions team has sort of been this, you know, team that has sort of persisted throughout, you know, Marvel comic books. And then eventually they sort of bring it back with this new iteration right here. And this is a really interesting makeup because when you look at the characters that are on this team, certainly it's possible that we could one day build our way to this version in the MCU. Now, one of the things that we have to kind of think about is that it looks like, by all accounts, we're building towards the Young Avengers. And if we're going to have characters like Kamala Khan and Sam Alexander Nova, it would probably be a safer bet to just put them on the Young Avengers roster. But one thing that I think about a lot is that, you know, in terms of branding, when we think about, you know, uh, the Marvel brand and the Avengers brand, I often wonder if Kevin Feige doesn't actually want to make films called things like the Young Avengers or Dark Avengers or New Avengers because the Avengers brand is so important to Marvel and Disney that you would think that they would really want to emphasize, you know, Avengers team as a team only. Which brings me back to this book here, which makes me think, you know, even though we're putting together the Young Avengers roster, I actually wonder if we're going to call them champions in the MCU. And the reason for that is just to create a distinction between, you know, Avengers and the Avengers films, and then also uh, what this iteration of the roster is. I just wonder if Marvel doesn't want to confuse their fan base too hard with having too many different Avengers titles. And if they actually name the team Champions, this would be a very interesting book because this sort of represents the first appearance of that new iteration. And to be digging into the numbers for this one, we'll take a look here. There's 9.8, 2,307 on the census. Fair market value suggested around the $95 range, 30-day moving around the 101. Of course, it's a newer book. You're not going to see it slabbed at the low grade. But typically speaking, when you go into eBay looking for this thing, you can typically find copies around the $15 to $20 range. I think it's a pretty good spec book and one that could definitely get hot in the future. All right, let's go on now to the fourth hottest trending book of the week. And the fourth hottest trending book of the week is another one that is actually kind of in line to sort of the Young Avengers makeup. And this one, of course, is Invincible Iron Man number one, new to the list, sitting in the 79th slot. And what is the significance of this? Well, this would be the first cover appearance of Riri Williams, a book that came out in 2016, written by Brian Michael Bendis. Now, you could also sort of make the argument that it's the first Riri Williams in title. You can see right there at the bottom, Riri Williams is Ironheart. Uh, and this is a book that has definitely been kind of a hot spec book in the market for quite some time. I mean, you know, Invincible Iron Man number nine has definitely really starting to shoot up in those price ranges. So people often look for those next best things. And one of the next best things, of course, is this book right here, her first cover appearance. I mean, it's an absolute beautiful cover. Uh, she looks awesome in the Iron Man armor. And I understand why people want to jump on a book like this. Now, we all know that later on in the year, we're going to be getting Black Panther 2. Uh, it's already been confirmed that Dominique Thorne is going to be showing up in that film as Riri Williams. Of course, next year, we're going to be getting, you know, the Riri Williams Disney Plus show that is being shepherded by Ryan Coogler. So this is really exciting times for this character. And, you know, of all the characters that we think about, you know, that are sort of the young guns or the new up and coming characters, it does you know, make you kind of wonder, like maybe Riri Williams has one of the bigger chances to kind of take that next step to the uh, Miles Morales level. You know, when I think about characters like Sam Alexander Nova or say Viv Vision or Wiccan and Speed, I think those characters can be cool and I think people can, you know, definitely be fans of them. But I definitely think Riri has more a possibility to really get to the next echelon of superhero. And for that reason, a lot of her books, you know, uh, reflect the, 
those beliefs because a lot of the prices are very, very high. And as we dig into the numbers for this one, we'll take a look here. 9.8 is 2,132 on the census. Fair market value around the $120 range. 30-day moving around 142. So not too bad for a first cover appearance at a 9.8 grade. And then down here at the bottom, of course, you're not going to see it slab too often. But when you go into eBay, you can find this book sitting around that $35, $40, $45 range or so. All right, let's move on now to the third hottest trending comic of the week. And the third hottest trending comic of the week is one that we've talked about many times before, uh, but this one is Darth Vader number three, up 19 spots, sitting in the 52nd slot. And what is the significance of this? Well, this would be the book written by Karen Gillan in 2015 and would feature the first appearance of the character known as Dr. Afra. Now, Dr. Afra is a character in the Star Wars universe and really is one that has become kind of a you know fan favorite amongst the Star Wars comic book readers. And there was a lot of speculation for some time that we would be seeing Dr. Afra appear in the book of Boba Fett. This was one of those books that got really hot, you know, during the course of the show. I mean, we got that appearance of Black Chrysanthemum, which of course makes his first appearance in book number one of this series. So everybody was thinking that maybe Dr. Afra was going to be next to show up in that show. And it, you know, of course it didn't really happen. So like things do after the show, the book really kind of, you know, took a nosedive or, or really corrected back down to kind of where it was before all of the excitement was building. But now that we're kind of at that new floor, that's when, you know, uh, seasoned collectors are looking to strike once again. And that's one of the reasons why this book is going to be showing up on a trending list is because when the price is correct after the show, people are thinking like, hey, this is a new good opportunity to jump in on this book. And I do still believe that Dr. Afra is going to show up at some point in the future. So I should probably, you know, take this opportunity to buy back into this book. And as we dig into the numbers for this one, we'll take a look here. 9.8 6,418 on the census. Fair market value suggests around the 425 dollar range 30 day moving around 481 you can see the 90 day average was at 513 so it's had that little bit of a correction you know coming off the heels of the show you can see right there just from the the chart it was like kind of at a new high during book of Boba Fett, and now it's kind of back on the dive right here so that's why i think people are looking at this book and thinking now might be a good time to buy and then of course at the low grade you're not going to see it slab because it's a newer book but typically speaking when you go onto ebay looking for raw copies of this book you can find them selling around that 150 to $175 range or so. All right, let's move on now to the second hottest trending comic of the week. And the second hottest trending comic of the week is one of the big books there is in all of comic books. This one, of course, is Incredible Hulk number 181, up 24 spots sitting in the 31st slot. And what is the significance of this? Well, this, of course, would be a book written by Len Wein that came out in 1974 and would feature the second appearance of Wolverine. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Don't dislike the video. Don't dislike the video. This would be the first full appearance of Wolverine, the first cover appearance of Wolverine, uh, his true second appearance, because we all know 180 is his true quote unquote first appearance, although I give it the distinction of a cameo. But you know, you guys know, this is the one of the all time greatest, you know, grail books there is in all of comic books. Wolverine, probably the second most popular Marvel superhero only behind Spider-Man. And it's only a matter of time before we see Wolverine coming into the MCU. Now, this is an interesting book to talk about as far as a trending book is concerned because this has been an extremely hot book over the course of this last year. But even Incredible Hulk 181 has had its correction from some of the heights that we got in 2021. And now we're kind of establishing that new floor. But I don't know about you guys, I'm sort of starting to feel the market kind of, you know, bubbling up once again. I'm starting to feel people, you know, making purchases. I notice a lot of the books I'm following on eBay uh, are actually being bought quite often. So now we're starting to feel like, you know, some of that excitement being restored amongst the comic book collectors. I I think that has a lot to do with the excitement for Multiverse of Madness and the anticipation that that movie might eventually establish that we have, you know, mutants in the MCU. I mean, it seems like we're going to be getting Professor X. People are thinking, hey, maybe there's going to be a Hugh Jackman cameo. I very much doubt that. But if, in fact, there was, you know, a time to buy this book and you were a fan of Wolverine, maybe you want to save yourself, you know, uh, from having to suffer the pain if, in fact, there is a Wolverine cameo in Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness. And that's why now might be a good time to, you know, capitalize and purchase this book. But as we dig into the numbers for this one, we'll take a look here. There's actually a 1.9 on the census. This this, I think, would be the most interesting sale if it ever actually went up for auction. I do think that this could beat the uh, Marvel Spotlight 5 number of $260,000. Uh, but let's take a look at the 9.8s. There's 132 on the census. Fair market value suggests 88,000. 30-day moving, how, 
however, is 96,000. So definitely a pricey book. I think it's only a matter of time before this thing becomes a six figure book at that grade level. Uh, we'll take a look here at the mid grade, you know, 5.0 fair market value around the $4,000 range. And then all the way down here at like the 2.0 level, you know, you're looking at $2,000 or so. So basically, you know, uh, when you go into eBay looking for raw copies of this thing, everybody sells their books basically at the graded fair market value level. So you'd be hard pressed to find this book for under $2,000 or so, because it really is the grail of grails when it comes to Bronze Age comic books and one of the ultimate grails for comic book collectors. All right, and let's go on now to the hottest trending comic of the week. And the hottest trending comic of the week is a book that keeps on showing up time and time again. I'm actually running out of things to tell you about X-Men number one, but of course the number one book on the trending list is X-Men number one, up 24 spots, now sitting in the number 10 slot. And what is the significance of this? Well, of course you guys know by now, this is the book that came out in 1991, written by Jim Lee and would feature his, you know, version of the X-Men that was kind of, you know, appropriating the 1991 animated series. And is just, you know, the ultimate uh, most sold comic book of all time. Uh, people really gravitate to this thing. It's just a great book to have in your collection. And this is one of those things where because there's so many out there, there's going to be constantly tons of sales going on. And that's going to be why a book like this is typically going to be showing up on lists that are like trending lists, especially when we're talking about volume of sales. So this book is always going to be, you know, hot in the market for that reason. 9.8s here, fair market value around the $120 range, 30 day moving 129. So a book that is really interesting to think about, you know, when we get, you know, these X-Men characters in the MCU, I do wonder if this book can ever hit that $200 fair market value. I mean, there are so many on the census. Look at this. There's 15,677. Uh, there's almost 10,000 alone at the 9.8 grade. So a very interesting book regardless. And, uh, you know, because I, I kind of feel like I'm just sort of wavering on this one, talking about this because it's not as interesting to me anymore because we've talked about it so much. Um, but I did want to kind of give you guys some bonus content. And one thing that I did want to shout out here is that, you know, I've noticed that GoCollect has been uh, publishing an article written by Ryan Kirksey. And this one is actually the, you know, hottest Silver Age comics that are kind of moving in the market. Of course, I like to cover Matt Tuck's article because it's really, you know, a kind of a holistic view of the entire market as far as volume of sales is moving. But you know me, I love me some Silver Age. I know you guys love some Silver Age too. And there is an article that Ryan's been doing that is just looking at the hottest Silver Age comics. Let me know if you guys would like me to kind of cover this article as well. I mean, some of, some of the Silver Age books, I think, are maybe some Sometimes a little more fun to talk about, but they're, you know, you're, you're never going to see uh, Fantastic Four number four be the number one trending book because there's just not as many copies uh, that we can see being sold in the market. So it's sort of hard to, you know, have these books show up on these lists. But, uh, you know, we can kind of quickly go over this, some bonus content because, you know, I'm tired of talking about X-Men 1. Uh, number five here, Fantastic Four. Number four, of course, the first Silver Age appearance of Namor. Feels like we're going to be getting him in Black Panther 2. We got Avengers 47, up 34 spots. This is the first Dane Whitman uh, before he becomes the Black Knight. A book that's probably being bought now because it's corrected so much. Uh, it used to be really hot, you know, leading up to Eternals. Uh, number three here, Amazing Spider-Man number four, up 35 spots. This is the first appearance of Sandman. I feel like this book suffers because that cover is uh, a little less inspiring than some of the other ones we've got in that early ASM. Uh, Incredible Hulk 102, up 42 spots in the 10th slot of Silver Age books. I actually think this book might be one of the most undervalued Silver Age books there is. And then lastly, we have Detective Comics number 359, up 77 spots. You know, this is the first appearance of Batgirl. Uh, kind of a lot of stuff, interesting things going on with that movie that's going to be coming out, uh, uh, Michael Keaton. Keaton is going to be reprising his role as Batman. And that this book right here could be one of those books, kind of like what I was saying with Incredible Hulk 102, where we look back on that book and we're thinking to ourselves, man, like Batgirl, one of the potential biggest characters there could be in all of comic books. And we all probably should have bought it when we had the chance. That said, though, you know, jury is still out with what's going on in the DC universe. I mean, as we're kind of seeing with different things like Morbius or Eternals, like, you know, those movie properties or those TV show properties can really hurt hurt the brand of some of our favorite characters. So uh, if the movie isn't very good or very successful, we might see a nosedive for that book. Anyways, let me know what you guys think. Do you guys have any of these books? Let me know if you guys would like me to cover that article, uh, kind of like I do with the uh, hottest and trending comic books. Uh, drop me a like, comment, subscribe if you're enjoying the content, and I will see you in the next video.